Hi everybody, my name is Randall Loy. I want to thank you once again for joining me here at the Infertility Channel and we have an interesting little program for today. We're going to be talking about reproductive toxicants. What is that? Sounds interesting. Well, those are toxins and, and those can come from the air, the soil, the water, the food. Just life in general is filled with toxins. And so I'm going to start with a great question. The lady's name is Lamitra. Lamitra from New Orleans, Louisiana. Dear Dr. Randall, I am so excited. I've gone through IVF and I'm finally pregnant. Three exclamation points. I've been very strict about not using any toxic cleaning supplies and I'm staying away from the smokers at work. My sister thinks I'm completely overreacting. Am I? Probably not. Over the last 70 years, since World War II, there has been a 15-fold increase in the number of chemicals in our environment. In those same years, running in parallel, there has been nearly equal increases in things like autism, childhood cancers, preterm labor and delivery, and obesity. Some of the best minds in the field are thinking that maybe there's a relation. 700 new, brand new chemicals are manufactured every single year in the United States. And already there are 84,000 chemicals out there for use in the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, a U.S. governmental agency has no clue what most of those do with respect to our reproductive function or life in general. Now, of those 84,000, to be fair, only about 3,000 to 3,500 of those are used by us on a regular basis, things like cleaning supplies. So I, I see you've been very strict about not using cleaning supplies. Good for you. If you have to use them, use them with gloves on in a well-ventilated space. And regarding cigarette smoke absolutely do not be around secondhand smoke and now we're beginning to appreciate so-called third-hand smoke we know that third-hand smoke or the dust that gets on the tables or in the carpets on the clothes of people who are around smoke third-hand smoke is increasing childhood cancers so even little kids exposed to that kind of dusty smoke from cigarettes are at risk you know speaking of cigarettes you know that 25 percent of teenage girls in North America, both the United States and Canada smoke. That's $100 billion of potential healthcare cost we're looking at just by this current generation smoking as much. That will lead to all sorts of developmental problems in their children if they continue and they're causing their kids to begin life under a cloud. So about uh, today, I have a list in my hand. I've written down some things for me to remember. So what are the adverse effects caused by reproductive toxicants? Okay, number one, genetic defects. There can be changes in the sperm cells or the egg cells, the very DNA of those that can be passed from one generation to the next. Number two, infertility. Number three, menstrual disorders. Although that one's not studied so well, it's possible that by changes in the physiology of the ovaries that menstrual function can be affected. Number four, impotence or decreased libido. Same rationale. Number five, spontaneous abortion, miscarriage. We know that that's certainly possible. Uh, number six, stillbirth. Uh, number seven, birth defects. Number eight, preterm labor and delivery, low birth weight. Number nine, childhood cancers. Number 10, developmental disorders such as hyperactivity disorder, decreased attention span and focus, slow learning abilities, those are all possible. Number 11, breast milk and other exposures after birth. And number 12, as we've talked about with third hand smoke, it's possible for these reproductive and developmental toxicants to have effect on babies and children if they're in skin, hair, clothing, uh, carpets, that sort of thing. There are list upon list upon list of toxins in our world as we've amply documented. But a few of these I want to highlight for you. Number one, we've talked about tobacco smoke, probably more than one billion compounds in a puff of cigarette smoke. We don't know what those do. Number two would be alcohol. Alcohol affects reproductive function. Carbon monoxide, whether coming from tobacco smoke or elsewhere. Another one would be lead. Another mercury. Those can cause brain damage in you or your children. And then there are a number of over-the-counter drugs and prescribed drugs that also really are, are toxic to you. So please always make your physician aware of the fact that you would desire to become pregnant or that you may be pregnant already. All right, you know me well enough by now that I have a story, and this, this is true. 
about two years ago, I had this young couple who came in and as soon as I opened the door to the room, I was engulfed by cigarette smoke. Everything smelled like cigarette smoke. And so I asked, how much do you smoke? And they both kind of looked at each other. He was smoking almost three packs a day and she was smoking two packs a day. They were in their late 20s. And I said, please, I implored them to stop. I said, do me this favor. I said, go to your primary care doctor and get a prescription for Chantix and stop. They both stopped. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take those $5.50 a pack and just put it into a jar. Get yourself one of those five gallon water jars and put the money every single day. And at the end of the year, I want you to go to Europe. That's exactly what they did. They actually saved the money. They had six or $7,000 and they took a cruise to the Mediterranean. So that's a toxic story that ends well. Thanks so much for joining me here on the Infertility Channel. Hope you're having fun. Next week, it's Viewer Mail Thursday. See you next time. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.